welcome to Britain. I'm Kate O'Hara, Chair of Cruise Britain, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to just some of the highlights accessible to cruise passengers during an exploration of Britain and its islands. Our thanks must go to the Discover England Connections Destination Partners for their generous sponsorship and support. So led by our Connections Partners, ports and destinations from around our shores share their own personal thoughts on questions such as what's the secret delight in your area? What's the must-see icon or best royal connection? And where would you take a visitor? See Britain through the eyes of those that live here. Enjoy the ride. secret delight of Orkney is Orkney itself. The secrets that can be discovered by our guests and visitors go far beyond just naming one or two locations because there is something for everyone here when you visit Orkney. The truly iconic location in Orkney, to my mind, is the Italian chapel. It's only small, it's on a small island between the Orkney mainland and South Ronaldsley next to the Churchill barriers, but it goes to show that you don't have to be big and brash to really give visitors a complete and utterly unique vision and experience. I would always take someone in Orkney to the Brock of Gurness, on the north coast of the Orkney mainland, uh, across the sound from the island of Rousey. It's the most beautiful place, it's magical. It shows how our ancestors lived thousands of years ago. It has nature, all around it. It is a place where you can contemplate and sit and really absorb what Orkney is. The outdoor activity that I would recommend in Orkney is to get outside, to stop, breathe and listen. However you want to do it, on a kayak, on a paddleboard, on an organised tour, is to get out into the nature and the scenery and experience the beauty of Orkney. We have two, two UNESCO World Heritage Sites. One is Durham Cathedral and the other is Hadrian's Wall, which is just fascinating. It stretches 73 miles from coast to coast across some of the wildest and most dramatic country in England. You can really experience Roman life, epic history and stunning locations with special tours even led by Roman centurions. Regarded as one of the finest Norman cathedrals in Europe, Durham Cathedral houses the shrine of Cuthbert of Lindisfarne. It overlooks the castle and beautiful medieval Durham city with its winding cobbled streets. I love the experience at Beamish Open Air Museum, but I think Annick Castle, due to its impressive nature and the fact that it's been home to the Duke of Northumberland's family for over 700 years, is a must-see. It's the second largest inhabited castle in the country, brimming with history, but even more exciting for our domestic and international visitors is the fact that the castle has taken a starring role in a number of film and television productions, including Harry Potter and the very popular drama Downton Abbey. Internationally designated rural and coastal landscapes adorn the northeast. The North Pennines is an area of outstanding natural beauty with UNESCO Global Geopark and Northumberland Coast Area is also an area of outstanding natural beauty with beautiful beaches in Druridge Bay, Bamborough and Lindus Farm along with many others. You can't mention them all without talking about the Beatles and there is uh, an array of attractions dedicated to the Fab Four, this includes two uh, museums, uh, tours of the city taking iconic sites such as the Cavern Club and the childhood homes of the Fab Four themselves, as well as the city's most famous selfie spot, the Beatles statue on the pierhead. So one of the unexpected delights that Liverpool has to offer is the Western Approaches Museum, only a five minute walk away from the cruise terminal. Western Approaches is a secret underground bunker that has been restored to look exactly as it did during World War II, pivotal in the success of with such a rich maritime heritage, um, I would personally take someone on their ferry across the Mersey, giving the, the best vantage point of our magnificent Liverpool skyline. most 
iconic attraction or experience in the area would be the Titanic Belfast. It's a museum that's situated on the slipways of where the, the ship was launched. There's just so much to see and do in it. Um, loads of interactive galleries that can really tell the full story of the stricken ship. Where would I take someone in Northern Ireland? would definitely have to be the North Coast. I mean, the Giants Causeway, Carrickareed Rope Bridge, Ballantoy Harbour, uh, White Rocks Beach, it's just the scenery, the views, the landscape is just breathtaking. Um, it's, it's just such a stunning part of the world and while you feel like you're a, a million miles away, it really is only about an hour from the cruise terminal and from Belfast city centre. Best royal connection about Northern Ireland would definitely be Hillsborough Castle and Gardens. Uh, the connection began in 1933 when Queen Victoria's granddaughter Princess Alice visited and then later in 1946 a young Princess Elizabeth came over to launch HMS Eagle at Harland and Wolf. She actually resides here now every time she comes to Northern Ireland. Wales has over 661 castles, mountain railways, national parks and thrill-seeking activities, including the fastest zip wire in Europe and some of the best golf courses in the UK. Coming into Cardiff Port in just a 15 minute ride away, you will find the magnificent Cardiff Castle. It sits right in the centre of the capital, giving passengers the opportunity to enjoy a wonderful shopping experience all undercover in the St David Shopping Centre and visit the authentic Cardiff Market. Carnarvon Castle is recognised around the world as one of the greatest buildings of the Middle Ages. This fortress palace on the banks of the River Seyant is grouped with Edward I's other castles as a World Heritage Site. The wildlife of Skoma and Ramsey Island off the Pembrokeshire coast is a real delight. North Wales has the stunning scenery of Snowdonia and in the south you'll find the Brecon Beacons National Park. Mid Wales holds dark sky status. The entire 45,000 acres of the Eland Valley are protected against light pollution, providing sanctuary for wildlife. The immersive itineraries include milking a cow then making ice cream, foraging on a hillside or shoreline then cooking what you find, seeing whales from a small aircraft and walking alpacas or sheep on many mountain trails. The most unexpected thing that cruise passengers can discover when coming into a cruise port to Bristol is the sheer breadth of experiences that are available as part of the excursion programme. Uh, you have the incredible cities of Bristol and Bath, museums, places to visit, food and drink, to the stunning countryside, the gardens, historic houses, including two areas of outstanding natural beauty in the Cotswolds and the Mendips. You also have rural towns and cities such as Cheddar, Wells and Glastonbury and the beautiful landscapes of the North Somerset coastal towns. But one of the most globally recognised icons is the Roman Bars in Bath. Tread in the footsteps of 2,000 years of history and discover why Bath was welcoming visitors back then and now, inspired by the thermal waters, which you can still visit and learn more about why Bath has received not one, but two UNESCO World Heritage designations. If I had to choose where to take someone, uh, I would take them to Brunel's SS Great Britain in Bristol, the world's first luxury liner and known as the Concorde of its day. It's been lovingly restored over the last 50 years, uh, showing its many roles, whether it's taking people to Australia to begin new lives, a troop ship, or just simply its significance in maritime heritage and groundbreaking engineering. Extend that visit and follow the story of groundbreaking innovation at Aerospace Bristol, uh, where the story of travel unfolds further with Bristol's aviation heritage. Part of the experience is to visit the last Concorde that ever flew uh, back in her home city. But my choice would be to take a street art tour of Bristol. The most stunning and unique scenery to enjoy in Plymouth is around the National Marine Park, which incorporates Plymouth Sound, Rivers Tamar and Plym. You can walk all the way around the reserve and the largest collection of grade one listed buildings in all of Europe. Plymouth's world-class waterfront is crowned by the Hoe, meaning high ridge or high place in Old English. This is the place where Sir Francis Drake allegedly insisted on finishing his games of bowls before going out to defeat the Spanish Armada. On Plymouth Hoe stands Smeaton's Tower, which is the red and white famous landmark lighthouse taking Drake's Island, 
the Plymouth Breakwater. Plymouth is also home to Devonport, Western Europe's largest naval base. Vessels from around the world visit quite frequently. The reserve itself, you can get out onto the water, you can go canoeing, snorkeling, uh, scuba diving. The streets here are lined with pubs, and bars, restaurants, museums, Mayflower Museum, and of course, the Mayflower Steps from which the Pilgrim Fathers uh, went out to embark the Mayflower on its voyage back in 1620. Within the Barbican area, I have a wonderful tour of the gin distillery. In fact, you can make your own gin. I would take somebody in Plymouth to the Box, which is the newest attraction. This fascinating museum, art gallery, and cultural center tells the story of international and local significance. The most unexpected thing or secret delight that cruise passengers can discover has to be the village of Carpenton. Only 30 minutes walk from Torquay Harbour. There is so much medieval history all over the village, including old stocks, an abandoned water mill, and an ancient gameskeeper cottage which nestles right in the heart of the woods. We are lucky enough to have been awarded global geopark status, and the Stone Age Caves at Kemp's Cabin are one of our key geopark sites here on the English Riviera. The caves themselves were discovered by the Victorians and are home to Britain's earliest humans and Ice Age beasts. You can see examples of the earliest tools ever found in Britain, along with bones and teeth of ancient Ice Age animals, as you can get up close with 400 million year old rocks and spectacular stalagmites and stalactites. The best all round experience would definitely be the Agatha Christie Mile. The world famous crime writer was born here in Torquay, and this activity takes in a dozen sites that are all linked to Torquay's most famous president. I think the most unexpected secret delight is the town of St Peter Port itself. From the minute you make your approach onto the anchorage, you'll see the beautiful harbour town. It's full of history, charm, cafes and bars. The place I would take someone would be a short trip over to Herm Island. It's literally three miles offshore from Guernsey and a quick 20 minute ferry ride. Once you're there, you can explore the cool bays and beaches and tranquil waters. There are no cars, there are no crowds. It really is a tropical island. And don't forget to look out for the dolphins because you may be lucky to see some. You may even see the seals on the humps just a little way out. Another very unexpected pleasure in visiting Herm is that it's the home to the most southerly colony of puffins in the British Isles. I think the truly iconic attraction would be a visit to Castle Cornet. It has guarded the harbour mouth for over 800 years. Once you're in the castle, there's some fantastic views back over the harbour or over the sister islands. And don't forget the noonday gun. You must hear that, it's something special. The truly iconic attractions in Jersey, there are many. Historical, retail and many more historical Neolithic sites. Although we're British, we have many French influences, from our cuisine through to our street names. In fact, Her Majesty the Queen is better known in Jersey as the Duke of Normandy and still appears on our legal tender, such as the one pound note. The wow factor has to be our scenery. From the rugged cliff tops on the north coast to the swooping fishing bays and the beautiful golden sand beaches on the south coast, there really is something for everybody. I would suggest that they hire a bike or cheat and hire an electric bike, cycle along the front and head towards the southwest corner of the island where they will find the beautiful iconic Corbier Lighthouse with breathtaking views over Saltmans Bay and be rewarded with a Jersey ice cream at the end. If I had the opportunity to take someone who didn't know Hampshire to a special place, then it would be Jane Austen's house. This pretty cottage was where Jane revised, wrote and had published all six of her treasured novels. You can step back in time to 1816 and follow in Jane's footsteps. Hampshire's finest world connection is Winchester Cathedral, which is a living monument to the heritage of England and is one of the most historically significant buildings in Britain. From the time of Alfred the Great until after the Norman Conquest, Winchester was England's capital and the cathedral was its royal chapel. Hampshire is also home to Hambledon, England's oldest commercial vineyard, the world-famous Bombay Sapphire Distillery and numerous craft breweries. 
or welcoming visitors to learn about and then taste these tantalising beverages. Hampshire's greatest attraction is Portsmouth Historic Dockyard. This is the UK's premier destination for naval history, which takes you on a magical journey through time, allowing you to step on board world famous ships and uncover some of the Navy's best kept secrets with first hand accounts from the Royal Navy's finest, past and present. These include Vice Admiral Lord Nelson's world famous flagship HMS Victory, the world renowned Mary Rose Museum, Queen Victoria's HMS Warrior, and Cold War submarine HMS Alliance. Passengers can literally go below decks to explore these ships, as well as sailing past them as they enter and leave the harbour. Our best royal connection has to be that we are the home of the Royal Navy. Princess Anne is the patron of the Royal Navy, and Queen Elizabeth and the Prince of Wales both have their namesake vessels based here. Cruise passengers are afforded spectacular views of these as they sail out of the harbour. Where would I take someone? I start off in Gunwolf Keys, which is also home to the Spinnaker Tower, which offers uninterrupted views across the Solent and our island city before making our way to Old Portsmouth, past the Fishing Keys. We are home to the amazing White Cliffs of Dover, probably one of the first things you see as you arrive on our shores. And not only are they um, an amazing geological uh, landscape, but also, of course, symbol of that amazing uh, wartime history that is so defining of Kent. And we were particularly delighted that Lonely Planet have um, announced that we are one of the best regions in the world to visit in 2022. The Kent's Heritage Coast, full of amazing landscapes, fantastic heritage. So whether it's a visit to uh, Dover Castle, which is stood on the frontier of Kent for thousands of years and was also incredibly important during uh, both the First and Second World War, but also um, visiting our Battle of Britain Memorial um, or um, the home of uh, Winston Churchill himself in Chartwell. Uh, there's an incredibly rich uh, wartime history uh, for visitors to enjoy. It would be um, a shame to miss the fantastic castles that we have here in Kent. So whether it's going to Hever Castle, the uh, birthplace of Anne Boleyn, or to Leeds Castle, which is one of the most um, amazing entertaining spaces since Henry VIII's time, um, exploring the wonderful gardens and the fantastic heritage that we have here in Kent is something that you simply can't miss. Tilbury has lots of secrets that people don't really recognise. We're in an iconic Grade II star listed building which was built in 1928. It can accommodate every size vessel. We have a fantastic connection into London and we are the nearest port to London. Virtually on our doorstop we have the Royal Opera House where they store the costumes, where the props are held and people are able to visit that facility. Tilbury Fort is virtually four minutes walk from where we are. It has a fantastic exhibition and an incredible amount of history that people can enjoy. You can pop across to Gravesend in two to three minutes and there you can go to the open markets and also visit the resting place of Pocahontas. And of course the biggest secret about Tilbury is that Queen Elizabeth I launched her fleet to go into battle against the Spanish Armada. Essex is situated perfectly between London, Cambridge and Europe mainland. We base the world's longest pleasure pier, Britain's oldest recorded town and 350 miles of stunning coastline where you can visit a theme park or an iconic Thames sailing barge. We have traditional English villages and miles of cycle paths throughout the stunning countryside that we have. But more than anything, we have friendly people. The most unexpected thing about Essex is that we have England's first city, Colchester. Colchester is steeped in rich history and you can take a guided tour around the town which will take in the remains of a Roman circus and England's largest remaining Roman wall. You can also visit the interactive Colchester Castle and view hidden Roman vaults. The history of Colchester is contrasted with an award-winning state-of-the-art gallery, First Sight, which has recently been voted the best museum in the country. One of the iconic things about Essex is the stately homes that we have many of which are still run and owned by private families. Audley End House and Gardens is one of the grandest and is an English heritage property. 
You can visit all parts of the house from the library to the children's nursery to the stables and its own vegetable garden. The experience has reenactments to bring the house to life as it would have been in the Jacobean times. I guess my favourite place in Essex though and where I would take someone is Dedham. The area is also referred to as Constable Country, made famous by artist John Constable and his Hayway in painting. Dedham is an area of outstanding natural beauty and you can take a rowing boat down the river. Also in Dedham you can have an afternoon tea in one of the iconic Tiptree tea rooms, the Essex Rose, and have a traditional English pub experience in the cosy Sun in Pub. Mm -hmm.